Yum, yum. Floyd here, the quick look at the radial array tool and plasticity. To you, select the solids or curves you'd like to duplicate. Then press the radial array icon in the lower right corner of the UI. Click in the view to select the center point where the duplicates will orient around and use the radial array attributes to configure the action, such as the number of duplicates and the repeat and repeat distance. Once you're happy with the results, right click in the view or click OK. Take advantage of this handy feature to quickly create evenly spaced duplicates in a radial pattern. Floyd here with a quick look at the rectangular array tool and plasticity. To you, start by selecting the solids or curves you'd like to duplicate. Click the rectangular array icon in the lower right corner of the UI, then click in the view to set the endpoint and the direction of the array. You can adjust the number of duplicates, and if the repeat attribute is greater than one, you can adjust the distance of the second direction. When you're happy with the configuration, simply right click in the view to commit. Floyd here with a quick look at using the duplicate command in plasticity. If you'd like to duplicate a solid or curve, simply make a selection and press Shift D on the keyboard. A duplicate will be generated and selected with the Move tool active, enabling you to reposition the new item. You'll most likely use this feature often, so make note of the shortcut for quick access. Floyd here with a quick look at the alternate duplicate command with faces and plasticity. To use the alternate duplicate command with faces, start by selecting the faces you'd like to work with, then use the keyboard shortcut Alt-D. A new solid will be created based on the selection. Use this powerful feature to quickly generate new solids based on the base geometry. Floyd here with a quick look at the Place Duplicate feature in Plasticity. Start by selecting the item you'd like to duplicate, and then use the keyboard shortcut Ctrl-D. Click on the item where you'd like its center to be, and then click on the surface of another item to place a duplicate. If the duplicate is flipped, simply use the keyboard shortcut F to flip it. Before committing, you can scale, rotate, and offset the duplicate using the control handles. Right-click to commit, and place as many duplicates as you'd like. This can be a quick way to place and align multiple duplicates on the surface of a solid, so be sure to experiment with this powerful feature. Floyd here with a quick tip for creating lines with fixed lengths and plasticity. When creating a line curve with the line tool, you can press the tab key on the keyboard to enter a specific numeric value. This will lock the length of the line to that value. You can also numerically fix the angle by tabbing to the angle input field and entering a numeric value. Use this workflow for more accurate line creation and plasticity. Floyd here with a quick tip for working with temporary guides and plasticity. To create new geometry equidistant from existing components, simply hover the cursor over an edge or point and press the shift key to create a temporary guide. This can be extremely useful for aligning elements during asset creation, so be sure to experiment with it and add it to your toolkit. Floyd here with a quick tip for creating rounded caps on cylinders and plasticity. To create a rounded cap on this cylinder, select the cap edge, start creating a fillet, then click the side of the cylinder to produce a rounded cap. Use this handy workflow to speed up asset creation and plasticity. Floyd here with some quick scale tool tips and plasticity. You can quickly flatten a skewed face by selecting it, pressing S on the keyboard to activate the scale tool, and then scale on one axis with a value of zero. You can also select multiple control points on curves and scale with a value of zero for all three axes to position all selected points in the same location, which can be useful when wanting to join curves. Add these to your toolkit to speed up asset creation and plasticity. Floyd here with a quick introduction to the wrap and unwrap commands in plasticity. Start by selecting the face you'd like to unwrap, then press F on the keyboard, type wrap, and click the unwrap command. New curves will be generated that you can use as reference guides. Next, create a curve within the bounds of the reference curves, then select the new curve along with the reference curves. Add the original face to the selection, then press F on the keyboard, type wrap, and click the wrap command. The new curve will be imprinted onto the surface of the solid. Floyd here with a quick look at the draft face tool in plasticity. To use, start by selecting a face to use as a reference, then click the draft face icon in the lower right corner of the UI, or use the keyboard shortcut Shift S. Then select a face to be angled, or Shift select multiple faces. Adjust the degrees attribute to angle the faces relative to the reference face. Floyd here with a quick look at deleting faces in plasticity. If you'd like to delete faces from a solid, the standard delete operation won't remove the faces. Use the keyboard shortcut Shift plus Delete to remove the faces. It's important to note that the solid will be converted into a sheet. Floyd here with a quick look at Boolean operations in plasticity. Start by activating the Boolean tool by clicking on the Boolean icon in the lower left corner of the UI, or by pressing Q on the keyboard. Next, select the target bodies you'd like to cut or join into, followed by the tool bodies to cut or join with. By default, the operation will be difference, 
which will subtract the tool from the target. Following the same steps and using the keyboard shortcut Q will result in union, which combines the tool and the target. Using the same steps followed by the keyboard shortcut Shift plus E, intersect is activated, leaving only the areas where the tool and target overlap. You can use the same steps followed by the keyboard shortcut Shift plus Q, which performs a slice operation. This retains both the tool and target, but slices both generating the intersecting geometry as well. Experiment with all of these options to take full advantage of Booleans. Floyd here with a quick look at the Keep Tools Boolean feature in Plasticity. When using the Boolean command, the tool bodies will be removed after the operation. If you'd like to retain the tools, use the keyboard shortcut T to activate the Keep Tools feature. This can be an extremely handy option, so be sure to add it to your toolkit. Floyd here with a quick look at performing a multi-target Boolean operation in Plasticity. Start by pressing Q on the keyboard to activate the Boolean tool. Then select the first target body. Next, click the Select Target Body button in the dialog and shift select the other objects you'd like to cut or join. Then click the Select Tool Bodies button and shift select the items you'd like to cut or join with. Right click to commit and you're all set. Floyd here with a quick introduction to the spiral tool in Plasticity. To create a spiral curve, simply activate the spiral tool, left click in the viewport to define the start, click again to define the axis the spiral will wrap around, and the third click will determine the radius. Before committing, you can adjust the attributes in the dialog, such as the number of turns, or toggling the handedness attribute from left to right. You can also use the handles to continue to make adjustments, such as the height of the spiral, the radius, and use the white ring handle to taper the spiral. When you're happy with the results, right click to commit. To quickly turn a spiral curve into a solid, press P for the pipe tool, and you're all set. Floyd here with a quick look at the text tool in Plasticity. To create text, press F on the keyboard, start typing text, and then select text. Enter the text you'd like to create in the text field, choose a font, adjust the size to your liking, and then right click to commit. Use the text tool to quickly add text elements to your assets. Floyd here with a quick look at tapering solids in Plasticity. To taper a solid, select a face, then use the white circle control handle to adjust the offset face degrees attribute. Floyd here with a quick look at the explode command in Plasticity. If you'd like to unjoin connected faces, sheets, or curves, use the keyboard shortcut Alt-J to fire the explode command. In this example, the solid is converted into disconnected sheets. Using the keyboard shortcut J will join or connect the sheets back into a solid body. Floyd here with a quick look at the Extend Edge command in Plasticity. For this example, I'll offset this arced edge, which produces a new edge that's not connected to the border edge of the face. To extend the selected edge, press F on the keyboard, start typing Extend, and click Extend Edge. Use this handy command to quickly extend edges on your meshes. Floyd here with a quick look at the Join and Unjoin commands in Plasticity. To join multiple curves, Simply select the curves you'd like to merge and press the J key on the keyboard. The join command can also be used to join faces by selecting the faces you'd like to join and pressing the J key. To unjoin elements, select them and use the keyboard shortcut Alt-J. Add these two commands to your toolkit to aid in asset creation. Floyd here with a quick look at the mirror tool in Plasticity. The mirror tool duplicates the selected items in a flipped or mirrored orientation to the original. To use, start by making a selection then click the mirror icon in the lower left corner of the UI, or use the keyboard shortcut Alt-X. Next, choose which axis you'd like to mirror across, then right-click to commit. Before committing to a mirror, you can interactively position the mirror plane. And if you don't want two separate bodies, press the keyboard shortcut Q to perform a Boolean union. This powerful feature enables you to spend less time constructing on symmetrical assets, and can also be useful to explore shapes. Floyd here with a quick look at patching holes and plasticity. When constructing assets using methods such as lofting, you often end up with holes or open boundary edges. You can patch these holes using the patch holes command by clicking on the patch holes icon in the lower right corner of the UI. Use this handy option to quickly patch holes on your assets. Floyd here with a quick look at beveling control points and plasticity. To bevel control points, start by selecting the control points you'd like to work with, then press B on the keyboard to activate the fillet tool. Adjust the distance by moving your mouse, and then left-click to commit. Use these simple steps to quickly bevel control points. Floyd here with a quick look at the Hollow Solid tool in Plasticity. To hollow a solid, start by selecting the faces you'd like to remove. Then click the Hollow Solid icon in the lower right corner of the UI, and adjust the thickness to your liking. Use these simple steps to hollow a solid. 
Floyd here with a quick introduction to the isoparam tool in Plasticity. To quickly add horizontal or vertical edges to a face, use the keyboard shortcut Control R to activate the isoparam tool. Then place the cursor over the faces you'd like to manipulate. Pressing the tab key will toggle the UV direction, switching between vertical and horizontal. And you can press and hold the shift key and use the mouse wheel to add or subtract cuts. When you're happy with the preview, simply left click to commit. Use this handy tool to quickly add additional segments to faces. Floyd here with a quick look at dragging and dropping materials in the outliner in Plasticity. To quickly assign the same material used on one object to another, simply click and drag the color swatch onto the target object in the outliner. Use this workflow to quickly assign materials in Plasticity. Floyd here with a quick look at the delete redundant topology command in Plasticity. To remove any redundant control points, edges, or faces from a selection, such as these control points on this curve, Press the F key on the keyboard, type in delete, and click delete redundant topology. Use this handy command to quickly remove unneeded components. Floyd here with a quick look at the freestyle move feature in Plasticity. When using the move tool, you can press F to activate freestyle move. When freestyle move is activated, the first left click will determine the move center, and the second left click will determine where the selection is moved. If you'd like to place the center at the center of the selection, simply right click after activating freestyle move then left click to commit to the move. After activating freestyle move, you can right click twice to move the selection to the origin. Use this handy move feature to enhance moving in plasticity. Floyd here with a quick tip to move and center an item at the origin in plasticity. If you'd like to quickly place and center an item at the origin, activate the move tool with the keyboard shortcut G, press F to activate freestyle move, right click to place the center at the center of the selection, then right click again to move the selection to the origin. Use these simple steps to quickly move and center a selection to the origin. Floyd here with a quick look at the freestyle feature for the move, scale, and rotate tools in Plasticity. When using any of the transform tools, pressing the F key will enable you to reposition the tool's pivot. For the move tool, click anywhere in the 3D space on a point, edge, or face to reposition the pivot, then move the selection to the desired location. This can make it extremely easy to snap to elements when using the move tool. When using freestyle with the scale and rotate tools, you can create a reference line that you can transform along. Add this powerful feature to your toolkit for additional control when moving, rotating, and scaling in Plasticity. Floyd here with a quick look at the pivot feature for the move, rotate, and scale tools in Plasticity. When using any of the transform tools, pressing the V key will enable you to reposition the tool's pivot by clicking anywhere in the 3D space on a point, edge, or face. This can be extremely useful for orienting the tool's handles so be sure to experiment with it to gain more control of this powerful feature. Floyd here with a quick look at resetting the rotate tool handles to world space and plasticity. When working with the rotate tool, you can reset or realign the rotation handles to world space by pressing the keyboard shortcut W. Use this handy feature to gain more control when using the rotate tool. Floyd here with a quick look at adjusting the rotation pivots and plasticity. Start by activating the rotate tool by pressing R on the keyboard. Before left-clicking and dragging on one of the rotation handles, press and hold the control key. Then left-click and drag on one of the handles to adjust the rotation pivot. Release the control key, then left-click and drag on a handle to rotate the selection. Use this handy feature to gain more control when using the rotate tool. Floyd here with a quick look at the orientation toggle for some of the tools in Plasticity. When working with tools such as the circle, cylinder, and regular polygon tool, you can quickly reorient the geometry by pressing the V key on the keyboard, which toggles between vertical and horizontal. This can be useful when generating components in one axis, but want the new geometry to be oriented in another. Yum, yum! 